Last time I did one of these monthly recap videos was back in April when the sports card market had started to cool down. But unfortunately, it cooled down in May and then continued to cool down in June and then continued to cool down in July. But fortunately, last month in August, things appear to turn around. And as many of you guys know, my goal for 2021 was to create full-time income from sports card investing and flipping, uh, content creation, YouTube ad revenue, and any sponsorships and affiliations that would come my way. But with three straight months of almost zero sales, this goal was in serious jeopardy. Well, with my PSA submission coming back last month and receiving a lot of nines and tens, as well as hype building up for the upcoming NFL season, was August a good enough month to help bail me out of a ridiculously dry summer, or will I have to rely on an amazing fall and winter to hopefully achieve my goal? Well, you are about to see all the transactions I had last month including a couple of sales that I actually lost money on. I took losses on the cards, something that I'm becoming more comfortable with myself as I mature in this hobby. And at the very end, I have two pieces of news that I'm very excited to share with you. Uh, big things are coming for us in the community over the next couple of weeks. And so uh, you already know the drill. Welcome back. Now let's get to work. All right, guys. Heading on over to Comp C and you see my first sale here at the bottom is this Lamar Jackson 2019 Prism Base. Might seem like the stupidest thing to ever buy and try and flip, but remember that back a year ago, uh, a second year base Prism card of a good player was actually pretty legit. You see here Damian Lillard, uh, Panini Brilliance got 21. Dwayne Haskins, I bought a couple of his cards graded and raw when he was completely forgotten about. He was released. Calvin Ridley Optic, bought for $3.25. An Optic Calvin Ridley, who's one of the top young receivers, sold for $10.73, got $10.19. Calvin Ridley Prism, $7.75, sold for $13, so doubled up right there. AJ Brown, look at this. This was February 23rd, so this was actually during the peak of when a lot of the cards had seen their highest price to date, and yet AJ Brown Prism, Gets uploaded to the system, bought for six seventy, dollars sells for 14 bucks. So that was just a really good purchase right there. Um, you know, I'm gonna be focused on graded cards from now on just to, just cause raw cards are a bit uh, all over the place. Just a bit, you know, too many logistics really, too many things to worry about. Derek Carr, $9 to 18. Chris Godwin card, I mean, this is a cool card. Rookie Triple Threads, I bought this back in March of last year. So this was one of my first purchases ever. Three jersey swatches of Chris Godwin. Bought for 245, sold for 12. Draymond Green, I sent this in. I bought the whole set of marquee that year, all the rookies, everything, for about $80. So that included Kawhi Leonard and Anthony Davis and the others. So happy to get rid of any Draymond Green card that's lingering around. This is the sweetest sale right here. So this is my Charizard card I've had since I was a kid. I think I have one left, which I'm fine with, but I've had this since I was, I guess, 13 years old. And someone, even though I see like a little nick right here, little nick right here, I know it's not in great shape. I don't know what it'll grade, but someone paid $681 for it. So I am going to sell all day long. That is fine. Tom Brady, another Derek Carr, another Derek Carr. Tom Brady, you know, these are the cards I was buying on Beckett Marketplace that I sent in for grading if it looked really good. And if not, I just sent to uh, Comp C. But yeah, sold for $8. I probably paid no more than four bucks for it. A muck, a couple Damian Lillards I got off of Beckett Marketplace back in the day and then sent in. Got 22, 24 each. Another Dwayne Haskins, some Tom Brady's, another Derek Carr, Carl Malone. All right, Brett Favre card. Bought for $1.61 in May of last year, sold for eight. Sometimes it just takes a long time to sell, but hey, you know, it's always a nice surprise. Then even this Lamar Jackson, I'm like, look, it's a second year base card. The fact that I can get out for, for a 40 cent profit, I would rather just get out and take a 10 cent loss if it came down to it, just because it's not a desirable card at all. But, um, you know, if someone wants to pay for it, I'm very happy to sell. I'm selling a lot more and buying very little uh, just because I have so much inventory. Here's another Clay Thompson. 
uh, from that same set. I believe this was a, the other set that I bought from Steel City Collectibles back in the day for 50 bucks, 80 bucks, something like that, and sold it for $33. Gronk, Calvin Ridley, Michael Bennett. I don't know why he was in the news, but I know he was in the news at some point back in May or June of last year. So I thought I would get his, his uh, rookie card in a very, uh, very rare version, like number to 25, thinking that maybe someone would hear his name in the news and then go for it. And it didn't happen then, but I bought it for two bucks, sold it for eight, so happy about that. DK Metcalf, this was a great one. Bought for 15, sold for 39. And I bought this in the peak of card prices when football was forgotten about. So that was a good one. LaShawn McCoy's, happy to offload those. I bought those when the Bucks signed LaShawn McCoy and then quickly signed Leonard from Net uh, right afterwards. Check this out. Work done, one of my favorite running backs because he's a old school Tampa Bay Buccaneer. This is his rookie card in Topps Chrome, PSA 9. Look at what I paid. I paid $3.80 for a work done PSA 9 rookie card, sold for 14. But the fact that this was $3.80 is just ridiculous because, you know, not a rare card, not a, an all time great running back, but $3.80 is just stupid. And then the last sale here is this Tom Brady 2004 Bowman Chrome. Again, I probably paid five to six dollars max for it because that's the most i would have paid it sold for 25 and then you see a couple sales here that's september 1st already including a deshaun watson but i'll go over that next month brad is his name and the boy's coming right out of comp c it's a flipper so when you take a look at all of the sales for august here they are i'm going down look at the right purchased by you see a lot of cards that were purchased by people on ebay and if you see down here 46.5% of the sales, 20 out of 43 were from people on eBay. So that's one benefit of Comp C is that I got pretty much twice the amount of sales because they dual list on eBay. And so that, that definitely means a lot. All right, cost of cards, I got a, a 147.03 for what was in Comp C system. Every card that I put in there uh, that I send into Comp C, I'm averaging at 275 because that's what uh, I'm, that's basically what the Beckett marketplace co cards were costing. And if there's something that is that I know I paid a lot more for that I'm selling, then I'll include a bonus amount. But the total cost I have at 185.53, like that Deshaun Watson card that I sold September 1st, I'll have to go in there and put in what I actually paid because that wouldn't be remotely accurate. So total sales minus their fee 11.41, and that means that minus the cost. Profit of $956.02, not including the 10% cash out fee. Now heading on over to Starstock where I submitted about 50 cards or so for this upcoming football season. You see at the very bottom, August 6 right here, I did sell a Dak Prescott silver, let's see what's this, PSA 9 for 285. I sold a Christian McCaffrey PSA 10 for 449. That was my best one for sure. And then a couple Gardner Minshews, uh, two tens for $45 a piece. On to eBay, and you see here August 10th, I have one of these Kobe Bryant Crusade cards in a PSA 9, my only PSA 9 I got back. And I got $2.95 for it, paid about $23, maybe $25 max. Next page, you see here at the bottom, I sold one of the Sebastian Ajo PSA 10s for $199. Great profit margin there as well. I think that was 25 to $30 all in. And then you see the uh, first Kobe Bryant PSA 10 of the Crusade sold for uh, 650 bucks. Amazing profit right there. And then the very top one, three Dwayne, Haskin, Dwayne Haskins in a PSA 9. I think I got these for like $35 or $40 for all three. And it was canceled. Uh, because they just never paid, but it actually turned out to be good because I didn't have these cards. I'd listed it before I had submitted these to Starstock. I think Starstock or Comp C, but I think Starstock. And so it actually turned out well that the order was canceled, but I would have made a, a decent little profit on it. Moving on to August 18th, and you see here another Kobe Bryant Crusade card sold for $7.25, which is just outstanding. Next one, Dwayne Haskins PSA 10 was supposed to sell for 69, and you see it says zero here, and that's because they actually paid, 
and I didn't realize that I didn't have this card. So I had to apologize. I tried to, uh, I offered them to buy it on Starstock and I'd give them a better price than this. I offered to send two Gardner Minshew PSA 10s instead of this one Dwayne Haskins. And they said, don't worry about it, just refund the money. So obviously I felt very bad because it is on me. That was 100% my fault. I just lost track of the listings. And that's what can get very confusing is when you have listings on my slabs and eBay and then you send it in somewhere and then you just forget that it's out there. But definitely on me, I gotta give that person credit. I think that his name's James for not giving me bad feedback when he could have actually done so. Okay. And at the very top here, $300 for this upper deck, uh, Goodwin Champions, Mike Tyson card. I love this card. I got several of them raw, three PSA 10s, and in this month, all three sold. And my last page of eBay sales, you see August 28th here, another Sebastian Ajo sold for 219, another one of the Mike Tyson sold for 300, and then a Gardner Minshew, look, five of them here sold for $250. This is actually about what I paid for the card overall. And I, I, I pretty much took a small loss on it, but I'm happy to get out, uh, clear some inventory, uh, refocus, reutilize that money towards a better investment. And the fact that he got traded, that was gonna be the upside to sell for a profit. But instead I sell for almost break even because of the trade and that, that, that's fine with me. Heading on over to my slabs and I had just created an account on my slabs, just started putting up cards. And you see here at the bottom, like pretty much the second I started with my slabs, I sold a couple cards, which was sweet. I uh, including this one right here. This is the blue wave Dak Prescott that I bought when I was at the Dallas show. Ironically, I bought it in on eBay while I was in Dallas. And so I sold it for 800. It sold almost right away. So I know that I underpriced it, but I still made a profit on it. Then this brilliance, Clay Thompson, 185 for the card. This was one of my cards from the submission, from the PSA submission. So great profit margin there. Next page, the second I listed this Bowman Chrome Kevin Durant PSA 10, it sold for 199, so I know I didn't charge enough because this is a second year card. It is a PSA 10, but uh, almost pure profit there, so I can't complain. And then my Deshaun Watson, one of my BGS 9.5 sold for 300. This is similar to what I paid for the card, so it's not a profit, but uh, you know, I'm just, things did not spike the way I thought. Things did not rebound with Deshaun the way I thought, even the fact that he's playing. Like a lot of y'all are like, Deshaun will never play football again and da 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 da. Well, guess what? He's still in the league. He hasn't been suspended yet. He hasn't gone through the legal stuff yet. So that was my gamble. And, you know, I was right in a way with him actually playing and it being overhyped. Like the, you know, just the whole court, the whole, the, the whole issue was overhyped at the time being. It'll all play out over time. But his cards didn't rebound the way I thought they would. Just like none of the football cards rebounded to high amounts the way we saw last year. But either way, I got out of it for $2.99. Next page, you see here at the bottom, I sold the Bowman Chrome Kevin Durant PSA 9 for 89 bucks. And then Dak Prescott Flash Prisms in a uh, BGS 9.5 for 385. Again, not huge margins on Dak Prescott, but Dak doesn't have a legacy. So if anything, I'm holding on to the Patrick Mahomes and maybe, yeah, not Lamar Jackson, but the Patrick Mahomes for sure, where he still has won a ring. Uh, Russell Wilson has won a ring. So I'm not as eager to sell those guys at break even or a small profit because there's always, you know, they can rely on that ring and they could always rely on a certain level of legacy. But someone like Dak, Pres uh, Dak Prescott, he doesn't have any rings yet. He doesn't have any legacy. So it's a lot more of a gamble in my opinion. Heading on over to the next page here. And uh, maybe I got this out of order to be honest, but you see here August 10th, I guess I did. This was the box of Topps Finest Soccer that I actually won at the National from Sports Card Investors uh, little happy hour thing where it was my raffle ticket that won this. I got offered $280 to sell it and I turned it down and I tried to contact the guy to get it back and say, yeah, I'll take 280, I'll take 280 because I didn't want the hassle and yet, I got $325 for it. I forgot to circle it in red, but y'all get the point. You can see it right here. So that's all profit. You know, obviously there's a 1% fee and I also, um, I also had to pay shipping as well. 
but pretty damn good. And then Kevin Durant, two of these I sold for 149, and I actually sold them to Tyler Nethercott. You can see his name here, Teapot from Sports Card Investor. He literally bought these cards an hour after he came on the stream and was talking about how he liked Kevin Durant as, as a purchase right now. So definitely uh, practicing what he preaches. Next page here, we got a couple Damian Lillards, and this is when the rumors were at its peak. You see, this is great. His, Dame, uh, his select PSA 10 for 650, that was like $25 all in right there. His brilliance, 195, about uh, $20 all in, maybe 19 all in. So uh, incredible profit margins there. Next page, and we have the third Tyson here at the bottom. This is for Steven Swancoat. Appreciate you uh, supporting the community, supporting me, and buying a really cool card. He got it for uh, 295. And then this Colin Kaepernick PSA 8, uh, sold it for 25 bucks. That is almost, that's about break even right there. So if I can get rid of PSA 8s of players that might not sell very easily, I will break even and get out all day long. And then I think this is the last one here. I got a Sebastian Ajo sale for 195. That was from my PSA submission. That's great. That was probably $25, maybe, maybe $30 all in. Uh, yeah, about 30 bucks all in. It was a $15 card, maybe 10, but about 15 bucks. And then this Topps Chrome Russell Wilson sold for $2.99. I forgot what I paid for it. I have it written down, but I'm just not a fan of a base Topps Chrome Russell Wilson rookie card. It doesn't really look very exciting to me. Uh, so uh, happy to sell it at 300 bucks before the season. All right, so heading on over to the numbers. Let's take a look. eBay, I had 10 orders total. Two of them canceled. I think it was 12 orders. 10 can, uh, two canceled, 12 cards total, $2,586 in gross revenue, minus the cards, the cost of the cards, $397.50. So my eBay profit, gross profit, $2,188.77. I'm trying to rush because I have a call in three minutes. He's gonna call and this phone is gonna screw up because he's gonna call and uh, end the video. I think that's how it works. Com C, 43 sales. 14 cards I sold in, uh, sent in at uh, 275 average. The Charizard is just bonus. And you know, I don't know what I paid for it when I was 12, but I'm saying that's 275 because I don't really have an accurate number. $956, two cents profit. Starstock, four sales, two Gardner Minshews, a DAC, a McCaffrey, $824 minus their 5% fee. And that would be a profit including withdrawal fee, because I don't think they charge for a withdrawal fee, of 184 bucks. My slabs crushed it here. 14 sales with Tyler Nethercott, or 14 total sales, one extra with Tyler Nethercott, who just, uh, we DMs and, and he got the other one. Here's the cost, here are the sales right here. Sale numbers, really good sales. Total gross revenue, $4,233.99. 1% fee, extremely low, that's insane. Minus the shipping, $84. Here are the cost of the cards. And the profit is 2,432 bucks right there. That is super good. And then the losses, dude, I messed up. Uh, Playmaker 88X, Daniel, I was gonna send him this 2010 Ken Griffey Jr. Topps Chrome uh, Refractor PSA 10. I packed it poorly, I put in one of those PWCC uh, envelopes that that's like that hard cardboard. I did not tape it right, especially because I threw in an extra slab and raw cards in there and it was just too stiff of cardboard and not strong enough of tape or not enough tape and it actually burst open. And so he got an empty envelope and I feel horrible. Obviously, you know, he paid 170 um, and I obviously, you know, refunded him, but the actual loss is $45 of cost would have been uh, a nice profit and I would have loved to have given him these bonus cards, but I just messed that up. So gotta admit your defeats, gotta admit your um, your mess ups as well. And I, I completely own that. YouTube revenue, $664.32. Come on guys, you gotta watch more ads. Pound the like button, come on. Let's get that up to a thousand bucks. And then market movers, dude, several of you guys have messaged me that you paid for the entire year, which is just phenomenal. Um, I'm a huge fan of being an affiliate of products I use that help myself and help others make better investing decisions, collecting decisions. So uh, I'm 100% proud of this number and I wanna thank you guys for contributing to this station and supporting me 
um, in a way that also supports yourself. So very cool. Uh, thank you so much for, for, you know, sticking, you know, watching me, supporting me as well as supporting yourself in the process. I'm rambling. The call is going to come through any second. So total profit, 2188, 956, 184, 24, da, 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 da. bam, look at that. $8,249.25. Damn. So as you can see, August was an amazing month for me. I think it was my best month so far, but it was also a month where I benefited from that PSA return coming back. And pretty much every card that I bought, uh, I bought at such a low price, pretty much pre-pandemic prices, that I can't expect for that to happen again. So once these cards are out, once I sell them, I, I won't be able to find deals like this in the future. So again, I'm gonna have to evolve. I'm gonna have to rely on graded cards and making less profit versus being able to find $10 Damian Lillard uh, select rookie cards and $10 Kobe Crusade cards that now are like 100 to $150 raw. The other thing too is that I still have a lot of inventory. So even though I'm making a profit, a pretty good profit on these cards that are selling, there are a lot of cards I have that I'm holding that are either at the same price I paid or maybe a little bit above or a little bit below. But because I have so much money held up in that inventory, it's stopping me from being able to buy other cards that I find better deals on. Like for you know uh, the upcoming NBA season, those were cards I wanted to get in on back in July when the prices were really low, but I didn't pull the trigger because I had so many football cards that I'm still holding on to and you know I don't want to over leverage myself. So I wanted to make sure that I'm still within my budget for sports card investing and uh, I'm not going to be holding too much football and then buying basketball and then all of a sudden I have $50,000 worth of cards when my original budget was only 25 or 30,000. And now the big news, and the first one is that I am beyond flattered and honored to be speaking at the Industry Summit next week. I was invited by Ray and Ted to talk about personal finance and how we can not only manage our money, but also take advantage of this crazy period in sports cards to start creating wealth for ourselves and our families before the next economic downturn. So I'm gonna be combining everything I've learned from uh, Robert Kiyosaki and Dave Ramsey and Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio and Tony Robbins, and everyone, everything I've learned into about a 40 minute presentation that I've been working like crazy on and I will uh, work on like crazy up until next Tuesday uh, because I, I really want to give this gift and I'm just so thankful that I've been invited to, uh, to speak and have this opportunity. So if you'll be at the Industry Summit, I believe it's Tuesday morning at 9.15, that is my slot. I would love to see you there. And the other big news is that we got our very first sponsor for the charity breaks that I've been looking to provide you guys uh, in the community. So we can start using breaks to benefit those that are less fortunate. And I wanna give a shout out to Burbank Sports Cards, especially Ryan over there at Burbank Sports Cards, for donating a box of 2020 NBA uh, Prism Fast Break. This box is about 575 to $600, so it's, a, it's not a, a small box, this is a very big deal. And hopefully we'll be able to raise at least 700 to $1,000 from this break. But the way it's gonna work is that there are 18 packs total. We're gonna be doing a break of uh, each slot being two packs, so nine total participants and I will set the prices later, but if you are interested in signing up for it, because I know people here on YouTube as well as on Instagram have already expressed interest, just go to the comebackcardinvestor.com backslash break and enter your name and email there. And what I'll do is I'll send out an email to nine random people to enter the break, give them 24 hours to pay for it. So I, my Venmo is not going out to a thousand people. And if anyone does not register in that amount of time, then I will uh, send it out to another couple of random people until we have each spot uh, filled. And I'll have a date for you uh, in terms of when we're gonna do it, but it'll probably be after the industry summits. Um, but guys, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you because it is your support that has allowed me to speak about personal finance at the industry summit, as well as get a box of this magnitude 
for our station because we have this reach, we have this strength to be able to give to charity. So I wanna thank each and every one of you uh, for being with me on this journey this year. If this video added a little bit of value to your life, please pound that like button and I will see you guys in the next one.